Let me start with a simple story. Now, if I ask most people what silver is, they'd probably say one of these three things. It's jewelry, coins, or something your nan keeps in a drawer. And that's fair, because for most of history, that's exactly what silver was. But that idea is now completely wrong. And that's why so many people are confused about what's actually happening today. Silver has quietly changed jobs. It's no longer just something you wear or store. Today, silver is working material. It's inside solar panels, electric cars, phones, hospitals, power grids, data center, basically the stuff modern life runs on. Now here's the important part, and this is where people miss it. Silver isn't valuable today because people want it. It's valuable because industries need it. And unlike gold, silver, doesn't just sit there once it's used. When silver goes into a phone or a car or a solar panel, most of that time it's gone for good. It doesn't get melted down. It doesn't come back into circulation. So silver has quietly moved from being something we store to something the world can actually run out of. And that when something is essential, widely used and so slowly disappearing, prices don't adjust nicely, they adjust suddenly. Most people don't see this coming because they're still thinking about silver the way it was 50 years ago, not the way it's used today. And to really understand why this matters, you need to see just how much silver modern life actually uses. Now here's a way to understand how important silver really is. If silver disappeared tomorrow, modern life wouldn't slow down, it would stop. That's not drama, it's practical. Silver isn't just used everywhere by accident, it's used because it's the best conductor of electricity on the planet. It's better than copper, better than gold, and that's why it's everywhere you don't see. Every solar panel needs silver to move electricity. Every electric car uses it to control systems and power flow. Your phone, your laptop, hospital machines, data centers, all rely on silver quietly doing its job. Now, here's the clever part. Technology doesn't use silver in big chunks. It uses tiny amounts, millions of times over. One phone doesn't matter, one solar panel doesn't matter, but millions of them do. And this is how demand sneaks up without anyone noticing. Governments push green energy, car companies switch to electric, AI and data centers keep expanding. Each change looks small on its own, but stacked together, they all pull on the same material, silver. And this isn't fashion. It's not a trend that fades when prices rise. These systems don't work without it, which brings us to the real issue, because while demand keeps climbing, the supply of silver hasn't been keeping up. Now here's the part most people don't realize. We're now using more silver every year than we produce. For a long time, things were balanced. Mines produced silver, recycling also helped. The system just about worked, but that balance is gone. Demand has shot up all at once. Solar panels, electric cars, electronics, data centers, all pulling on the same supply, but the silver production hasn't grown the same way. And here's why. Most silver isn't mined on its own. It usually comes out the ground as a byproduct of mining other metals like copper, lead, or zinc. So even if silver demand explodes, miners don't just decide to dig more silver. They only get silver if it makes sense to mine the other metals first. At the same time, recycling silver is hard. It's spread across millions of tiny devices like phones in drawers, electronics that's never been taken apart properly. So year after year, we've been using more silver than we can replace, quietly and consistently. That's not my opinion, that's just mass. And when something is essential, widely used, and slowly being drawn down, eventually something has to give. Silver supply isn't controlled by silver prices. It's controlled by whether those other metals are worth mining. So even if silver demand doubles, supply doesn't automatically follow. Now add another problem. Opening a new mine takes years. You've got permits, planning, infrastructure, environmental approvals. You don't fix a supply problem quickly. And there's something else most people never hear about, and that's the quality. The best silver deposits were mined decades ago. What's left is usually lower quality. That means more effort, more cost, and less silver per tonne of rock. So when demand rises fast, like it has, supply 
simply can't react in time. That's how bottlenecks form, not because anyone planned it, but because the system wasn't built for sudden change. Once supply tightens, the next question becomes important. Who controls what's left and where's it coming from? When supply gets tight, control starts to matter. And this is where China comes into the picture. China doesn't just use a lot of silver, it sits right at the center of the industries that need it most. Solar panels, electric vehicles, and electronics. Battery technology, a huge amount of the world's silver ends up flowing into Chinese supply chains, simply because that's where so much manufacturing happens. Now, here's the important thing to understand. Countries think carefully about materials modern life depends on, not emotionally, not loudly, by design. That doesn't mean panic, it means leverage. When a country controls large parts of both the manufacturing base and the supply chain, it has options others don't. It can choose to prioritize its own industries. It can slow exports. It can quietly influence availability without making headlines. We've seen it before with rare earth metals. Silver isn't officially labeled the same way, but it's starting to behave like one. And that's why this isn't just an investment story. It's a supply chain story, a manufacturing story, and quietly one about national interests. The biggest disruptions don't usually start with big headlines. They start quietly. When supply chains are already tight, it doesn't take much to cause a ripple. A small change in export rules a decision to prioritize domestic manufacturing, a choice to stockpile instead of sell. On their own, these sound minor, but when silver is involved, those ripples travel fast because silver sits inside so many essential systems. Even a small restriction can slow things down across the world. Manufacturers can't just wait. If silver isn't available, projects stall. That's why markets react so sharply to policy news, not because of hype, but because businesses are trying to secure materials they cannot operate without. And the tighter the system becomes, the more sensitive it gets. That's when volatility appears, not because people are guessing, but because the margin for error disappears. This is how a metal most people never think about suddenly ends up in the center of global attention. Here's something most people have no idea about. A lot of silver market isn't actually silver at all. It's paper, contracts, ETFs, promises that say you own silver without the metal ever moving anywhere. On paper, there looks like plenty of silver. In real life, there isn't. The same ounce of silver could be promised to more than one person at the same time. As long as nobody asks for delivery, the system works because it's built on confidence. But when supply gets tight and people start wanting the actual metal, that's when problems appear. This doesn't mean the system is broken. It just means it only works while everyone stays comfortable. And here's the key shift. When silver is treated as an industrial necessity, not just a financial product, the difference between owning silver and a claim on paper really matters. And that's when markets suddenly reprice risks not slowly, but all at once. Whenever prices move quickly, people shout one word, bubble. But not every fast move is a bubble. Here's the difference. A bubble is driven by excitement. People buying because everyone else is buying. Prices going up just because prices went up yesterday. That's not what's happening with silver. What's pushing silver right now is the real world. Factories need it technology needs it, energy systems need it. Silver isn't being chased because it's fashionable, it's being secured because it's necessary. That doesn't mean prices only go one way. Silver has always been jumpy. It moves fast and it moves down fast. Pullbacks are normal, but there's a big difference between a bubble popping and a market slowly realizing something has changed. If silver roll is energy, technology and manufacturing is bigger than it used to be, then prices don't stay stuck in the past forever. They reset. And that's why this moment feels uncomfortable. Old reference points stop working. People argue about what silver should be worth instead of looking at what it's actually being used for today. 
This is where a lot of people get confused. Silver is not a replacement for gold and it shouldn't be treated like one. Gold and silver do very different jobs. Gold is mainly a store of value. It's held, it's saved, and it sits outside the system. Gold isn't used up. It doesn't get consumed. It just stays gold. Silver is different. Silver lives in two worlds. Part of it behaves like a precious metal. Part of it behaves like an industrial material. And that's really important because when industry demand rises, silver can move quickly. But when the economy slows, silver can fall quickly too. This is where people make mistakes. Some people dismiss silver completely. Others treat it like a guaranteed win. Neither makes sense. Silver can sit alongside gold, not instead of it. They balance different risks. Gold is steadier, silver is more sensitive. More movement up and more movement down. Personally, I understand gold far better than I understand silver as an investment. That doesn't make silver bad. It just means it needs to be approached with clear eyes, not excitement. Trip away headlines, the arguments and the noise. This isn't about panic, it's about understanding. Silver's role in the world has changed. It's no longer just something you wear or store, it's something the modern economy runs on. That creates pressure, it creates movement and it creates confusion. But it doesn't mean everyone should rush out and buy silver and it doesn't mean chasing prices. What it does mean is this, the old assumptions don't work anymore. Gold and silver both have a place. They both do different jobs. And if you don't understand those differences, you're just guessing. Now I've spent decades in this trade, watching cycles come and go. The people who do best aren't the ones who react the fastest. They're the ones who understand what they're holding and why they are holding it. That's why I've put together a free guide that explains gold and silver properly. No hype and no jargon, just the facts, the history, and how these metals actually behave over time. Now, if you want a copy, email me directly. All the details are below in the description, and I'll send it straight to you. Now, if you found this useful, consider subscribing. It helps us keep making honest, educational content like this. I'm James at Blackwell Jewelers.